was saying was that the process is um, that I'll flip a coin to see who will go first. We have some set questions, so we'll ask you those questions, and then we'll alternate um, back and forth. Um, it's not a debate, so we're just having the, the questions and the responses as you choose to answer those. Um, and then um, a little bit later after that, we'll have the opportunity for the public to come up, and I'll go over some of the ground rules when the public speaks. Is that acceptable? Good, because otherwise yes. we'd have to change everything, and that would be a big problem. So I am going to flip the official city coin, and I will ask. And again, um, you have the Testing. microphones there, and you can push the little button there. Testing. Testing. And then again, I'm going to step out of the way as, as, we answer those, as you answer those questions. So the first um, question, which will be for uh, both of you, as I said, will alternate with the, those questions. Um, Ms. Ward's first. And the question is, what is your motivation for seeking a council seat? I am very passionate. Can everybody hear me? Okay. I am very passionate about the things in my life that I love, and I love Jefferson City. Since moving here in 1999, I have witnessed a lot of positive change. Good things are happening, especially in our urban core area, and I want to help with making uh, good things continue to happen. I have always looked for ways to improve my neighborhoods that I have lived in. For example, I uh, worked with the neighbors and city staff and city council to pass the first and only conservation di district in the city of Jefferson by ordinance in 2001. I now want to work to help move the community forward. I would also like to bring gender diversity. Being a woman, I would be able to connect and represent this population. I have two children who are older now and the support of my husband, so I have the time it will take to learn the issues and talk to the residents of the second ward and others in the community about what they want for our future. I am alive. I don't know how to push buttons, though. <laughs> yes. But anyway, I have been here all my life. Let's just say it that way. I've lived in the same family home for the, over 55 years, and I live on 1222 Carter Street, which is in the second ward. I established a business in 1967 and still in that business daily. I'm proud to say that I have independently owned and operate locally. Uh, I've had the same telephone number since the late 40s. It's only five digits at that time, and they've added some digits. At my home, my business is listed in the local telephone directory, and I'm under Carolyn McDowell and Merle Norman Cosmetics through the day. I'm not hard to find. But I believe I do bring vision to the community, which I've heard a lot of words been around saying vision. But this must be done by the citizens and by the city council. Knowing what has happened in the past and where we are and where we need to be is always important. Vision, think about it. And I, I apologize. I forgot to start off with the self-introduction. So um, why don't we go ahead and have Ms. McDowell go ahead and do the self-introductions, and then we'll come back, and I'll start with the second question. Am I the same person? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I'm Carolyn McDowell, and I live at 1222 Carter Street. As I said, I've lived there most of my life since I was a teenager. Uh, my family home, uh, as you well know, that uh, my family's been in business for many years in this community and real estate. And my dad was an auctioneer, and they asked often why I want to talk. It's because dad was an auctioneer and mother was a woman. So what more do you need? But anyway, I have enjoyed living in Jefferson City, going to school here, and having a business for many, many years. It's part of my life. I don't plan to leave. I'll probably be buried here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Ward, and I reside at 115 West Atchison Street, which is on the south side. Um, I have two children, Patrick, who is 18, and he will be attending um, MU in August. Very exciting times in our household. And uh, Elizabeth, Ella, who is 15, she's here supporting her mom. Um, and I've been married to Michael uh, Ward for 21 years. Um, we chose to move to Jefferson City for the Catholic school system. Um, we have volunteered extensively um, at St. Peter Parish and also St. Peter Inner Parish School. Um, I served six years on the school board serving as president and I also assisted with the uh, principal search. Um, I have always tried to find ways to become involved in my neighborhood and the activities that my kids have been involved in um, because I feel educating our youth and, and being there for our youth um, is what's going to lead us into a bright future. Okay, Ms. I'm just going to do it from here, Ms. McDowell. You're going to be doing the next question first. So what do you think you bring to the council? Not only myself, but I think I bring community history, institutional knowledge of city government, budget, budget, budget uh, knowledge, and knowing the city. I even know all the alleys, so I, I'm pretty well ready to do a lot of things. I cannot solve any of the, part, uh, the problems by myself, but I believe I can help with the members of the council uh, with their accomplishments. Great. Thank you. Ms. Ward, same question. I am a hard-working, dedicated person who has a strong sense of giving back to your community. In my professional life, I work in the medical compliance field where I deal with sensitive issues on a daily basis, so I am comfortable with complex and controversial issues. I conduct compliance seminars and monitor required training so I have ex experience in researching issues and enforcing policies and regulations. In considering any issue, it is important to research the topic and listen to all in order to make the best decision. I have been on several boards and commissions, like the St. Peter's School Board that I had mentioned, so I know how important it is to build a consensus and work together to make progress. Okay, and Ms. Ward, the next question you start with, and what would you hope to accomplish while on the City Council? Our community has a lot going for it, and I want to keep this energy moving forward. Much to the dedication of volunteers and support of the city, the downtown and the south side are thriving. We, we can build upon this momentum by becoming more of a tourist de destination as the state capital. If tourists come to our city and pay our sales tax, our budget increases, providing more support for important services like public transit. We have to ensure we plan wisely, looking seriously at every line item so essential services are not compromised. We must take nothing for granted. We also have to watch that our urban core does not become blighted. There are some incentives in place, like the property tax incentive for homeowners, but we should look at partners like the school board, Lincoln University, and the Old Town Redevelopment Company to maintain the integrity of our housing stock and businesses in the second ward and elsewhere in the city. Ms. McDowell, same question. What would you hope to accomplish while on the city council? I'd like to welcome all the legal citizens we have a di diversified population and community. I find it's most interesting that the gender makeup is that there's more men in this community than there are females. And that's usually not the truth in most communities. We have 
uh, males and 48% females in 17,000 households. Our racial makeup is 78% white, African American 17%. We have grown a long way for a long time. I believe that we need to look and take care of all of our people, not only in uh, housing, transportation, and the needs of people in general. Uh, I'd also like to see that we keep, keep uh, state government here in Jefferson City. Many times state government wants to go to other parts of the state, but I'd like to keep them in Jefferson City. Even though we're about a 38 square mile city, uh, we have space for them. Our population is over 43,000. I can remember when it was much less. So we're growing. We're growing very well. Uh, I'd like to lower the taxes, um, lower taxes for, with no reduction of services. I think is always important. Uh, we should also bring in maybe uh, safety in our city court. I believe it that we have a problem now. I, I'm always concerned about not only the people that are here to serve in the court system, but the people are here for the court. I think we need to take a long, hard look about our courts and our court in Jefferson City. I'm very much uh, happy with the, the gentleman in charge. I just think the, the facility, it's in here. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McDowell, the next question, Ms. McDowell, is yours. Um, what do you think the city does well? I think public safety has always done well in Jefferson City. I've had the opportunity in a few years past and when we had police uh, committees and fire department uh, committees, we built the fire uh, station next the station next door, a couple of fire places, fire places, right, fire stations. And so uh, I think we've done very well with public service and public safety. Uh, I think we've done really good with a stewards of the monies because the money that comes in, we have to be accountable for. Also, one of the key things I think the city does really well, snow removal. So that tells you a lot of things about the community that we work together with all these hills. Ms. Ward, same question. What do you think the city does well? while serving on a commission. Our public services, our police, fire, and our street departments do a great job and we must ensure that there are resources in place so they can continue their services at a high level. Though there has been some improvement with the relationship between the city and the council, I do believe that there is still opportunity there to build that relationship. And Ms. Ward, you're first on this question. On what do you think the city needs to improve? I think we can do a better job in interfacing regularly with the officials in both the state and federal government. As a capital city, we should all be working together. There are some success stories with the state, but there needs to be ongoing dialogue with regular interactions. We need to avoid putting out fires and be proactive. Perhaps a city council person could serve as a liaison to make sure that those conversations are always taking place. On a federal level, I see little interaction with officials and grant writing. Although federal funding is shrinking, there are still opportunities for grants, especially in, for urban projects. Lincoln University is an obvious partner in this regard. For example, I remember several years ago, we were chosen as the first five capital cities, one of the first five capital cities for planning renovations in the Mill Bottom area. 
but it seems there hasn't been any follow-up on funding for implementation. If these plans were put on the back burner, I would like to get that ball rolling again. We should also be more diligent about the Missouri Penitentiary site. It's over 100 acres on the river within our urban core. We need to start working on a master plan. The recent mold crisis forced the city and state to take some action, but it just applied to a small section on that 140-acre site. The state also has decided not to put their MoDOT facility there, so we need to be asking what is happening there. Parks and schools are currently looking for expansion sites. I also feel this would be a good site for the much needed convention center, as placing it out of our urban core would be a setup for failure. MSP should be in play for all these projects. Perhaps the second and the first ward council members can work with our redevelopment commission uh, to keep the MSBP on the front burner and help move this forward. Thank you, Ms. McDowell. Same question on what do you think the city needs to improve? Code enforcement has always been very dear to my heart because it takes care of the home and the buildings. The staff does a very well job with what they can. I would like to see that we would increase the fund for the abatement so that we would not have the broken window theory in our communities and in our commercial areas. Uh, when we have and resolve the broken window theory, uh, we have less crime, we have less uh, public surf surf surface people have to be there. Uh, so it's important that we look at code enforcement. Uh, a customer service for all. We need a, some place to have a hotline that we should not be bothering our uh, directors on little small ideas are the public or the city administrator here uh, maybe a person could say this is where it belongs where's which it go uh, not just be a complaint driven city uh, continue good relations with state of Missouri, county of coal lincoln university and all the other colleges and universities in, in jefferson city maybe we should work as a have uh, interns with the city from the colleges and universities I'd also like to see that working with their adjoining counties and cities, the Callaway, Osage, Montauk, and Miller counties. I know we have regional planning. I've had the opportunity to serve on that many years, and it works very well. Uh, the other thing I'd really like to see is in the future, the airport. I believe the regional airport should be named as it is, Co uh, Columbia, Jefferson City Regional Airport. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ward. Um, same question, um, what are the three um, biggest issues facing the city in the near term and the long term? In regards to the near term issue, um, I believe the budget. Uh, we have to work to get and continue to have our financial house in order. If that means reducing activities or funding, we need to make some hard choices so we don't go from crisis to crisis. The public transit service is an essential part of our urban core in assisting those who don't have other means of transportation to work, school, shopping, church, medical services, etc. We need to avoid creating a hardship for our city residents. There are many supporters in the community who would like to work with the city council to help them solve this problem, and I think we need to embrace this input. input. Something needs to be done with the abandoned buildings in our city. We can't just keep on discussing it and being afraid to do something. Some measures have been put in place, but I am fearful we are losing momentum, and these buildings are going to continue to deteriorate, and even more blight will occur in our urban core. Encouraging full use of these properties can have a significant positive impact on our budget. since. These abandoned and blighted buildings have a very low, have very low property values, which are generating very minimal tax revenue. We have one owner who has 21 properties on the city's abandoned property list. We are continuing to allow this owner to bring down property values and contribute to the blight of the city.
Thank you. And with that, we'll um, have some questions from the public. Excuse me. What? what, what? Long term. We're not through. Oh, I thought you were going. Oh, excuse me. Go <laughs> ahead. That was short term. Go ahead. Go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> Long term? <laughs> Which one is it? Um, <laughs> who would like who start? Ms. Dwar, okay. do you want to go ahead and start since it's long term? Please. <laughs> okay. Um, again, the city's budget. Um, we should never take our eyes off of it. Uh, another issue is our slow population growth, especially among our young professionals. We are losing our young talent and they are not coming back. We need to find ways to attract business and in industry to assist with the budget, but also to provide a means for our youth who have lived in this city that they have grown, it, grown up in to come back. During recent discussions with those in the community, I have learned that the chamber hired a very competent outside consultant who provided specific recommendations regarding our demographic problem and how to reverse this dangerous trend. We need to start working on each of these recommendations. I am sure that there are a number of items that the community will support if we address them individually and responsibly. Jefferson City is a great place to raise a family, and I want all of our children to think about living here when they finish college. Another one is our sprawl that's occurring. The downtown in the city is the heart of our community. You lose it and you have lost the community's momentum for economic development, for youth population growth and diversity. The city, encouraged, the city has encouraged housing development, schools and businesses in our suburbs. All areas of town deserve encouragement and support. With growth, when growth is occurring elsewhere, we really have to be careful that we don't that we don't overlook our older parts of town and we need to be good stewards of our established neighborhoods and businesses again the Missouri State Penitentiary is a possible solution that we are not watching close enough thank you okay. thank you education and employment is probably one of the most important things I think we have to look at in Jefferson City. With the improvement of our local medical services and the possibility to have the very best school of nursing at the St. Mary's Hospital site via Lincoln University, we can be the very best in the mid-America area on health care. We would not have to leave town. A subject going to come up again, I know, very quickly is a multi-purpose building, which I believe the citizens can help design themselves. And we have many citizens in this community that can help and have knowledge. We may never have to go out to outsource. We have very well educated people. If we have a, an open stage, sports arena, a large type, 40,000 square foot, the site could be any place also. Gross receipts is one of the things I'm always looking at when I see my utility bill, my telephone bill, my groceries, or taxes, just in general. I would like to take a look at the system and give the citizens a break on the high usage utilities. In October, we will be looking at, in 2015, the trash contract. I think it's important that we take a hard look at our trash compact track. I'm really sad about all the blue barrels in this community. Not that they're not doing a good, they're just kind of a sight. But let's don't forget the uh, schools and the parks. Infrastructure for roads, bridges, water supplies, sewers, electrical grids, transportation, all the utilities should be curbs and gutters, uh, should be looked at general good maintenance at all time. One thing I'd really like to look at is possibility of having a trade industry development within the city government. We could take a look at it, see if it works. If it does work, it'd be good for us. Many communities have it within their, their government. We need to look at the number of trains and large trucks that go north and south area in mid-Missouri. I'd like to look at an intermodal freight, freight transportation system 
in the community because it's here. Many do not realize that the trains that go through Missouri alone are 500 freight trains in a 24 hour, and there's and it's 60 trains in a 24 hour in Jefferson City. That's 120 employees that get on a train here in 24 hours on Union Pacific. Let's not forget Amtrak. As many of you well know, my love for Amtrak. I've been on and off the train for many years. We've worked very hard to keep that in Jefferson City. At one time, it was just going to be St. Louis and, and uh, Kansas City. They've tried to take many things out of here, but we've gone to the legislators and asked for the additional uh, funding. Sometimes it began at three, three, uh, three million dollars. We've got probably six to eight million dollars now. But I believe there's a near term and long term there should be not overlooked is the history of the community. The houses, the buildings, the families, the oral history, the knowledge of the general. We are losing history daily. The history can come and go, but the point is to bring visitors to the city of Jefferson. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, now for some opportunity for the public to ask some questions. Um, public, you can come up um, to the podium, ask your question. Um, it'd be preferable but not mandatory if you identify yourself and to whom you are asking the question, if it's one candidate or both. Um, please be civil. Remember, all questions need to be appropriate. And it's up to the candidates, um, you all, to determine whether you um, choose to answer a particular question or not. So with that, I will see if there are any questions from the public. And if so, you, somebody can come up to the podium, ask your question. Van Horn, I reside at 808 Strasburg Court. Um, and there's a series of questions. Just came back from Europe, so I've seen a lot of changes that have been taking place worldwide. We talked about a vision of Jefferson City, which you began. My question is, what do you see Jefferson City look like in 15 years? What would Jefferson City look like based on your vision in 15 years? And then second of all, if based on within that vision, how are you going to finance that vision? Who's that addressed to? Either one, both oh. of you. Vision is to know where you've been and where you are to get to where you want to go. And that's probably just like trying to get here to this, today to this meeting. You knew where you wanted to go. Uh, Vision is something that each one of us think differently about. So that's basically, Mr. Van Horn, that we have to have those input, those people to put ideas to the city council, but it should be done by the citizens, not particularly the city council. That's probably the, the vehicle that you'll use, but it will be a vision. My vision is, at one time, was to have two bridges across the Missouri River. It happened. My vision was to have a new penitentiary. And, and out of Jefferson City, but it is Jefferson City, we know that, but it's still the downtown area. Uh, these visions come with work together, thinking together, and being sincere about things. You can talk the subject to death, and that's what we've done so many times in this community. I've worked on convention centers for 40 years. I just mentioned about a multi-service pl place. I think that we have places that can be used right now to be built in good places, not that we have the places, but we can build. Uh, bringing sports into here has really been, we've been a sports town for years. And many of you I've seen have been the athletes of lo local high schools and colleges and so on. But we can do a lot of things by those things. Don't forget your history. That's a vision I have, is to keep us on the map as a destination place. I don't know if I've answered your question or not, but it, citizens are the most important uh, input that we have. Thank you for your question. Um, I have seen, like I had mentioned, a lot of positive change. I'm new to the community. Um, I moved here in 1999. I 
had never even been in the downtown until we moved here and I was excited when I went to our downtown and since that time it has become an energized place to go and we have increased our tourists in that area and the facades it's it's been beautified it's important to keep your downtown as the core um, as the the heartbeat of your community and I would like to make sure that development occurs more in our urban core so it we can provide those types of services to the pe people who choose to live in that area um, there's a lot of topics that are being discussed a lot of issues regarding the convention center and a multiplex recreational center um, I would like to keep this out of uh, the the suburbs area and, and keep it more in the urban core I've experienced as being a young parent and driving all over the state um, going to club tournaments and it, it brings in a lot of people and, and if we had that type of center to 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 promote those type of events we would have a lot more tourist in our downtown um, public transit I I would just like to make sure that there are services in place for those in our community that need them uh, and and make our our downtown and our, our city more of diverse population and, and place to live in regards to funding that I think you need to be more creative in your your ideas um, you know with public transit if we can explore marketing ideas um, I know it's been discussed that we do market um, on the, the, tr the, the buses, but I haven't noticed that. Um, I know in the city of Columbia, you see that marketing on, on all the, uh, the buses that go by and it turns your heads. They're, they're, they're fun, they're interesting, and, and I think there's businesses out there that would welcome that opportunity to have that type of, that type of advertising for their business. And also, you know, community input, you know, listening to the ideas and what, what the people of the community wants. Hi, uh, Stephanie Bell, and I work and uh, live in Ward 2, and I'm happy to be here tonight. As you know, um, Ward 2. As the Ward 2 representative, you will represent uh, the whole downtown area. So my question um, references downtown. And the first question, there's a couple parts to it, but it's related. So what do you see as downtown's biggest strengths? And what do you see as downtown's current struggles? Or where is there room for improvement? And then secondly, um, do you have a position on a potential CID in downtown? Thank you. The strength of our downtown, um, I think the diverse businesses um, is one of the strengths. I know that in buying a gift, I like to go to downtown because you can find different gifts and, and more personable service. Um, it's also a beautiful area to go to and just be able to walk. Um, all the interesting places to eat, you know, uh, we've had a lot of volunteer work in that area that has created a lot of fun events that that have created a, a night life in the downtown it just doesn't shut you know shut down at five o'clock anymore um, you can go there anytime in the evening or or night and and there's people walking around and and uh, it, it's just to me it's exciting I when my children were younger we used to walk in the downtown areas of every community we went to and one of the things I would make them do is to look up you know you, you walk downtown or you you walk a streetscape and you don't realize the beauty that's around you so we have a beautiful beautiful downtown and, and I think that is a definite definite plus plus. and what was your other question to do streetscape improvements and it's where all the business owners kind of come together um, and impose maybe a special
special assessment to fund some of these? Do you have a position on it? We are fortunate to have very passionate volunteers in our community that help us to move forward. Um, you know, whether it's uh, an issue that's near and dear to them, it, do, it, it helps all of us. We benefit from that. And, and I commend the Downtown Association and all the, the hours and the time that they do put in to everything that they do. Um, I would support more happening in downtown. I know I thought it was a positive thing when there were no more meters on High Street to encourage um, people to go and shop down there. You know, people always say that there's no place to park. Um, I've never had a problem. I mean, you might have to walk a little bit, but um, I don't think that should be a deterrent. Um, I don't think we need a new parking garage at this time. Uh, I like the fact that it's become more of a pedestrian area with the crosswalks. Um, I'm more sensitive to that environment, um, working at MU um, with the pedestrian area. But, you know, driving downtown this weekend, just seeing everybody sit, sitting out enjoying their coffee, um, I think there's more to come, and, and I'm excited, and I would love to move the downtown even further. I, I, I enjoy being at home and living in the downtown area and hearing the things that are going on downtown. You know, I can hear the music taking place and um, I, I follow it all on Facebook and, and I, I just really appreciate all the work that's being done down there. I truly do. I've lived in downtown most of my life because I started a small business there in 1969 at 202 East High. I was a very young person too, believe it or not. <laughs> but that was almost 48 years ago. I read in the Jefferson City paper yesterday that it's going to be a bakery or a wedding uh, cake place and I was really excited about it because I spent a lot of years in that building. Uh, it's important, I owned the building also, so that was a part of, of my family and I owned the building later. I now I'm at 316 Jefferson Street, which is one of the prettiest buildings in the downtown. It's off, but it's a Spanish-looking building that is built in 1929. It is uh, after the Kansas City Plaza. If you'll look up, you'll see terracotta. You will see balconies. You'll see blue. I have to tell you a little story about that, Mr. Uh, that owns the building and owned the building had gone he was a bootlegger and he had gone to Kansas City I don't know if he was taking or bringing back but he saw the, the JC Nichols Plaza being built and he came back and he's, he's going to build on his property too so if you just look up sometime and you were speaking about looking up you got to look up because pictures are taken of that building constantly and I try to stay out of the pictures so anyway the the downtown is is important for any community to have a viable downtown. I don't care if you're Jefferson City or Tipton or Hartsburg or whatever it may be, you have to have a downtown. That's just all it's about. Uh, the suggestions, when I was president of the Downtown Association, we had a lot of fun. Of course, again, we did not have, we used the area in the downtown on the 100 block of Madison Street for uh, car shows and it was absolutely lovely around the mansion on Capitol Avenue that we had these car shows and our streets were open and we could walk and talk and whatever it had to be in that area that is one thing that I'd like to see that we utilize more of the north part of the downtown that be Capitol Avenue one and 200 block of Madison Street of course the time that we've had there we've seen a lot of difference in the facades they've changed a lot to the better, I will say. We've had some burnouts that had some old buildings that were absolutely beautiful and then we've put in some things that should not have been as modern as they are. They're not historically or, or uh, historically correct. And uh, the CID, I think that has to have a little discussion. We talked about this many years ago, uh, the same system in the downtown. It is a, uh, a thing that charges the front foot 
of a, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's a front foot tax on the property owner. And it's what happens there as a renter, if your if your property tax go up, the renters go up. So it, it may be good, then there's always a re uh, something we need to think about too. I think a lot of conversation needs to talk about that. So, but looking good now. Are there any, any other questions from the public? No other questions of the public? <laughs> I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> um, so there's an opportunity now for closing remarks um, from uh, each of you. And we didn't figure out how to go first, so I'll let you two figure that out. <laughs> I'll go. because <laughs> Anyway, thank you for letting me be here today and being part of city government in action. This is action right here in front of us. I hope the media has got enough stories to cover all their newspapers and their radios and their television because action is so important. As many of you know, I've been active in the city government and also in the county and the national. Uh, I was a county official at one time in the early 90s, and I thoroughly enjoyed that, and it was something that is being very well done by the person in charge of that. Uh, also, I've been on many city boards, commissions, and authorities, and throughout the, the city on uh, civic boards. While serving on the city council, I never missed a council meeting or a committee meeting in 10 years I served. I'm very proud of that. I go to work every day. I have missed in 48 years about 10 days and about five, uh, three weeks ago I missed five days in a row for some little surgery I had to have. I appreciate your support as your second ward councilman. Thank you. I too would like to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present to you this evening. I also want to thank our, our city councilmen for their service to, uh, to our community and all the time that they put in. Um, like I have mentioned before, um, I am new to the city, so I believe I bring a lot of energy and, and more, th more forward thinking ideas. Um, I've been married to my husband for 21 years and we've raised our two children here and uh, plan to continue on retiring here. Um, I, again, I love the downtown area and another thing I forgot to mention is now we have the farmer's market on Madison Avenue and you know, I just think bringing in more events in that area is, is what's going to strengthen our urban core and, and be beneficial. We could become walking communities again. Um, I know one of the first things I did um, when we were restoring our home over on the south side was I took out the fence. Um, I like to talk to my neighbors. I like to be open. I created a stone step down the alley to our other neighbors. I, I like to, I like to promote the neighborhood feel. Um, of a community and we need those those public services um, so the people who choose to live in the urban core have a way um, to live without hardship wondering how they're gonna get to work or get to their doctor's appointment um, there was one other thing oh regarding the trash cans um, in our, our trash system we do have a lot of blue containers but I believe there is an ordinance where you're supposed to remove them from the street so they're not visible um, so maybe we should look into enforcing that a little stronger um, I love the recycling um, I lived in Columbia after graduating from MU and it is a recycling community um, I think it's something great uh, that can help our environment and teach our children um, to think about our future. Um, I chaired a recycling committee at St. Peter when my children were attending school there. 
and to make it easy on everyone, I was considered the crazy can lady. Um, but the second Thursday of every month, I would stand on the big flat as the parents dropped their kids off and they would hand out their, their bags of cans. And uh, myself and another parent would take them to the recycling plant. And to date, we have collected over three tons of um, aluminum cans, which has kept that out of the landfills. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. You know, I would also share fun recycling facts with administration at, at the uh, school so they could share that. And my kids would come home and say, Mom, my teacher read something you had in there re with recycling. And, I, you know, I embarrass my kids all the time. Um, I also served on the school board there. And it wasn't for any issue or because my kids were there. I believe in the betterment of our youth. Um, they're going to lead us into the future. And I, I also helped serve on the uh, principal search there. And from what I hear, she's a wonderful addition to that campus. My son quizzed me this afternoon. <laughs> and at one point he asked, Mom, why, why do you look like you're going to cry? <laughs> And I said, I love Jeff City, and I want to be a part of it more. Thank you. So with that, I was going to say to, to both of you, Ms. Ward and Ms. McDowell, thank you for your interest. Thank you for your participation tonight. And perhaps one more round of applause for the audience. And that can that concludes the meeting for tonight. Thank you.